Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at three ways that you can get these sorts of text effects in Adobe Illustrator. There really is only one way to get the rounded end effect but there is two options for getting the edges that follow the shape of the letter. So we're going to start with a new file. I'm going to just use a document 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. I'm going to create my text first up so I'm going to the type tool. I'm just going to type in this year's date, select it and I'm going to choose the font Anton because I know it's a nice sort of chunky font and I'm going to increase it to 400 points. Now given that I also want to create lines out of this I think that the spacing in my type is a little bit tight so I'm going to select my type, I'm going to the character option here and I'm going to drop this down and just increase the spacing between the letters. I think probably something like 25 is going to work for me, it's a little bit more spacious. So I need this three times so I'm just going to create two new documents and copy this across. So let's start with the rounded line option. So I'm going to the line tool here. I'm going to set it to have a stroke color and I'm going to change the stroke color because it's going to be easy to see over the top of our text. Now I'm going to draw my lines from this edge well clear of the number two to this edge well clear of the number five, holding the shift key as I do so that my line is perfectly horizontal. It's going to increase the weight of the line. So I'm just going to sort of work out what I want in terms of a line. I think again, probably need it to be a few more points thick. With the line selected, I'm going here to the stroke options. I'm going to choose this caps, the round caps. That's going to ensure that the lines when we create them are going to have this nice round edge to them. I'm going to select over this line, hold down the Alt or Option key on a Mac and just drag down. And right now what I'm doing is eyeballing the spacing that I want for these lines. So I'm thinking that this is going to be a pretty good spacing for me. Once I let it go with the line still selected, I'm just going to hold down the control key and tap the letter D. And I'm going to keep doing that until I cover up my letters. Now the fact that everything's gone a bit skewed doesn't matter as long as there's plenty of room around these letters and your letters are covered up. So these are all individual lines and this is a type object at the back. I'm just going to show my layers palette. I just pressed F7 to get it but you could also get it from window and then layers. We're just having a look here. What we've got is the date, your text object, whatever that happens to be and a whole series of lines. Now the problem with this particular process that's going to give us round edges is that we can no longer edit the numbers once we've actually created the effect. We're going to have to expand this. So I'm selecting on the type object here and I'm going to object expand. I'm just going to click OK. So once you've done that your type is no longer editable. So just be aware of that. And that is as I said a disadvantage of this process. Here you can see that our numbers are actually separate objects now. Now to get the effect that we're looking for we're going to select over everything and we're going over here to the shape builder tool. It shares a toolbar position with the live paint bucket tool. So I'm going to the shape builder tool. I'm going to hold down the alt key that's optional on a Mac and what I want to do is just drag over the bits of lines that we don't want. And this is why you wanted a bit of space between things because you need plenty of room to move and you don't want to get into the numbers as you're drawing over the lines that you want to remove. Now you'll see I'm not getting exactly all of them right now. I'm just aiming for the big ticket items and then we're going to go and clean up the rest. You can see that there's lines in here and here and here and over here. So again, holding down the Alt key, that's really important because that's the remove bit. Again, just dragging over these, dragging over these. If you make a mistake, just press Control or Command Z to undo it and start again on that bit. Let's go here. I'm just going to click away. You can probably see the lines are there, but we've also got the numbers still, so I'm just going to turn those off. So there are our lines in the shape of a date. Now if you wanted to clean this up and you don't want these numbers here, you would just delete them. So what we would do is we would just come down here and take this number element and just delete it. And then we would select everything else and we put it in a group, object group. 
because that's just going to neaten things up. If you wanted to, you could group each of these numbers, the lines for each of these numbers, so you had four groups. You do want to have things neat and tidy in your layers palette. So as I said, this one's really nice, love the rounded ends, but the price is that it's not editable and everything's fixed right now. So let's have a look at the second option. Again, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. Again, once I've got my line, I'm just going to drag it down and then I'm going to Control or Command D and just cover up my letters. Now in this case I'm going to use a clipping mask. So what I'm going to do is to clip the lines to the shape of the underlying text. So let's go back to the Layers palette and we want to get this Type Object. So I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to Object and then Arrange and Bring to the Front because I want to eat in front of the lines because the process of creating a clipping mask is that what we do is we have the clipping mask on the top and whatever is going to be clipped underneath. So just going to select over everything, right click and choose Make Clipping Mask. Now at any stage if Make Clipping Mask is not available you can always come up to the Object menu and force a clipping mask by going to Object Clipping Mask Make. And here we've got our lines but this time they're cut off at the edges. You can see that they're following the shape of the numbers really a little more accurately. But we've got a similar sort of thing happening here. This is actually our numbers and these are the lines. So we could take the numbers, you can see that I've got them selected here and I don't have the line selected and I can move it a little bit. So this would give me the ability to adjust how the lines are filling the number shapes. It's also possible to change the text. So let's say that we want to make this 2006. I'm just selecting the number five in this type object. I've got the type object selected. I'm selecting the number and just changing it. So this one is really nicely editable. I really like this effect. You've got the numbers very even around the edge, but it is something different to these rounded letters. But this one, of course, here is fully editable. Now the final option is a sort of combination of the two that we've done so far with a slight difference. So I'm going to drag out my line again and obviously increase the stroke to what I want it to be. I'm going to grab my line and I'm going to Alt drag it down to start off with the spacing I want and then just Control D to copy all of these elements. Now for this final option everything's going to be baked in. So the numbers are going to be baked in and so the shape's going to be baked in. So again I'm going to my numbers, I'm just going to bring it up to the top with Object Arrange and then Bring to Front. I'm also going to make it a little bit opaque because I need to line my lines up really carefully. Because whatever I'm seeing on the screen now is what I'm going to be seeing later on. Now once you've got everything lined up the way you want it to be lined up, you're going to select over everything and then you're going to expand everything. With Object Expand, OK. So what you're doing is you're turning your numbers into shapes, individual shapes, and you're going to have a shape for every single one of these numbers, but also you're converting your lines into a filled shape. So let's go to one of these lines, they're in groups here, but when I select on this line you'll see it's got a fill. It doesn't have a stroke, a line would just be a stroke, a fill is a filled shape so that's a, a basically a rectangle and that's the difference, that's why this effect's going to be baked in. Selecting over everything, going back to the Shape Builder tool, exactly the same as we did earlier, we're just going to come down and remove the lines that we don't want. But this time the lines are going to form to the shape of the letters. They're going to be on angles. And you can only achieve this with lines in this way if you expand them into filled shapes. Because lines themselves can't have those really nice ends, those angled ends. It's just not possible. Just going to make sure I get all of the bits that I want here. Again, just holding down the Alt or Option key, which with the Shape Builder tool just ensures that you're removing things that you don't want. Now I can see something I've missed here. It might be easier to zoom in since it's such a small line. Everything looks just fine here now. Now if I don't want the numbers to show, I can just hide them. So we've got again these numbers that are made up of shapes, but in this case these are all fill paths. If we didn't want this black number, 
behind or any combination of it, we can just grab that and we can delete it. You can also just grab everything and I would then ungroup it with object ungroup so that you're expanding everything into just individual lines. Make sure that ungroup is no longer an option and then just group it so that you've got the entire project, these sets of numbers made up of lines as a single group. Or if you wanted to, of course, you could just select individual numbers and group them that way. So there are three methods of getting a similar result. The first method, lines with rounded ends, not editable. The second method with your clipping mask, fully editable. Pretty much everything is editable here. And the final one, we've got lines that are actually filled paths, not editable, but again, it's a slightly different process and a slightly different result in terms of what you end up with. And in some cases that might be important. For example, you may not be allowed to sell something that has a clipping mask in it. And in that case, you'd want to use this process because there is no clipping mask. Clipping mask can often be confusing to people and you may not want to use a clipping mask for something that you're going to sell. So just the balance of what effect you want to achieve and what you're willing to compromise on to achieve it. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.